today's video, part three, I will highlight the research on GLP-1 inhibitors such as Ozempic, Ugovi, Manjaro, and their remarkable clinical benefits on Alzheimer's disease, addiction, cognitive function, improved cardiovascular health, and more. There are also numerous anecdotes being revealed by people when they're on these drugs that we just can't ignore. The science and clinical studies have yet to catch up to confirm these claims. Hi, I'm Dr. Sibali Pal, a professor in bariatric medicine. Last week in part two video on Ozempic, I covered some of the serious side effects that have been encountered with these drugs. So please go view it so you have a complete picture of the pros and cons of taking these medications. And two weeks ago, in part one of this video series, I highlighted some of the drawbacks of taking Ozempic, such as rapid weight loss, skinny fat, old face, and some of the innovative approaches on how we can tackle some of these negative effects. I am still conflicted in how I feel about these drugs, even though I've come across most of the research on Ozempic. If you're thinking about going on these drugs or on these drugs, then I think you may want to do your own risk-benefit assessment, where you have to balance the established risk with the recognized clinical benefits of these drugs, which I will discuss today. How you choose to weigh this up is based on your personal circumstances, and you should discuss this with your health practitioner. I hope the information I present today will stimulate you to have a deeper look into these drugs so you can decide whether to start on them, use them for the short term, or continue long term. So let's get into it. So addictive behaviors. There's a tremendous amount of anecdotes that people are saying about their cravings when they're on these drugs. They report not only have they have a reduced desire to eat food, but they have all sorts of decreased desires on other behaviors like shopping, drugs, alcohol, and gambling. Early human studies have shown the potential for the administered GLP agonist to cross the blood-brain barrier, and thus they have potential to interfere with normal brain action. An animal study published in 2020 found that drugs like semiglutide reduce alcohol drinking in rodents. However, as yet, no studies have confirmed the same effects in humans. Whether the drug's effect on hedonic urges to consume food can extend to urges like drugs, alcohol are yet to be confirmed by research studies, although animal studies are promising. Inflammation. Obesity is also linked with inflammation, and a growing body of evidence suggests that inflammation is involved in numerous conditions, including heart disease and Alzheimer's disease. Several studies have suggested that as well as causing people to lose weight, semiglutide may be effective in lowering inflammation. Semiglutide lowers the level of a compound in the blood called C-reactive protein, or CRP, a marker of inflammation. It is unknown if the effect of semiglutide on CRP could be just a side effect of people losing weight rather than the drug itself reducing inflammation. There are some small studies that show that Ozempic decreases inflammation in the liver, heart, and kidney. New evidence indicates that Ozempic may decrease inflammation in the brain, and this can help people with Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, or cardiovascular disease. Cardiovascular disease and stroke. A study recruited 17,000 people who are overweight or obese, non-diabetic, but have had a pre-existing cardiovascular disease. Taking semiglutide for three years resulted in 20% fewer heart attacks, strokes, and deaths compared to those taking placebo. Weight loss of 9.4% was associated with semiglutide and was one of the most likely factors to cause the reduction in cardiac events. While such weight loss drugs may reduce the risk factors for cardiovascular disease, the trial suggested that something more was going on. As the drug started preventing heart attack within the first few months, it's been hypothesized that these drugs may decrease inflammation, thereby benefiting the cardiovascular system. Dementia. One of the most exciting research projects with semiglutide is its impact on dementia. Over 55 million people worldwide have dementia. Obesity and type 2 diabetes are a major risk factor for developing this condition. A Danish study that followed people with type 2 diabetes for five years found that those on semiglutide or liriglutide, another diabetic drug, had a lower incidence of dementia. Two clinical trials that started in 2021 are investigating whether oral doses of semiglutide will slow disease progression in people with early stage Alzheimer's, which is the most common form of dementia. These trials are due to finish in 2026 because it takes a long time for people to develop the disease. Knee osteoarthritis pain. Emerging evidence indicates that these drugs can alleviate joint pain and slow down the progression of arthritis. This study of 40,000 adults with clinically diagnosed osteoarthritis age 45 and over 
found that the weight loss induced by Ozempic led to improved pain and functional scores, reduced reliance on pain medication, and less frequent need for cortisone injections in people with knee arthritis. The MRI scans of these people showed slower progression of arthritis and a reduced probability of needing surgical intervention. Long-term follow-up showed that these improvements were not temporary, but were maintained over time. These drugs could be the next big breakthrough in arthritis treatment, given that weight loss is extremely beneficial for the muscular skeletal system and arthritis sufferers. Preventing diabetes in overweight and obese. Type 2 diabetes can be a devastating and destructive disease. It begins with insulin resistance in which the fat, liver, and muscle cells cannot use insulin properly. Ultimately, the body needs more insulin than it can produce, causing blood sugar to rise. The elevated levels of insulin can lead to serious health issues if not properly managed. Pre-diabetes is usually a warning sign of type 2 diabetes when you have elevated blood sugar and high insulin levels. Even with a modest weight loss, you may be able to prevent and delay the onset of type 2 diabetes. Dietary changes, stress reduction, and physical activity all can help with the weight loss. However, if lifestyle modifications haven't worked to get weight down, then taking GLP-1 agonist medications may help. It is important that people do not develop full-blown diabetes with early insulin resistance as more serious health concerns come with the disease. Interestingly, semiglutide has been shown to reduce future risk of diabetes by over 60% in patients with obesity, whether a patient had prediabetes or normal blood glucose levels. Participants' risk scores decreased the most in the first 20 weeks. They went from 20.6% risk at week 0 to 11.4% risk at week 20 of taking the drug. In those who continued to receive semiglutide, the risk score decreased further to 7.7%. But in those who were switched to a placebo at this midpoint, the risk rose back up again to 15.4%. In the SCOPE trial, nearly two-thirds of the patients with prediabetes baseline reverted to normal blood sugar levels after the trial. Now, reversal of diabetes. In the findings presented in the European Association for Study of Diabetes, the long-term effectiveness of injectable semiglutide was shown by improving blood sugar levels and weight loss in people with type 2 diabetes. The improvement in blood sugar was probably due to the weight loss that occurs because of this drug. It's been said that the diabetes can be reversed with significant weight loss within the first five years of diagnosis. If you keep the weight off, you're likely to have an A1C, an indicator of diabetes, in the normal range. It's also been said that even though you put your diabetes into remission or have it very well controlled, it'll always be there in the background. This is why if you are a diabetic and you choose to stop taking Ozempic, you may want to make sure you keep your weight down with the right lifestyle choices like strength training, high protein diet, or else your diabetes will most likely come back with your weight gain. See part one of this Ozempic series where I go into detail about lifestyle management while on this drug. Kidney disease. Ozempic may delay the progression of kidney disease. Chronic kidney disease affects one in three adults with diabetes, especially if, if blood sugar levels are not controlled. The result, kidneys cannot function effectively when the blood vessels are damaged. Research suggests that these drugs may halt the progression of kidney disease by suppressing inflammation and reducing oxidative stress and fibrosis in the kidney. Fatty liver disease. Now, non-alcoholic Fatty liver disease, or NAFLD, is the foremost liver disease in the world, affecting 30% of the general population. However, its prevalence rises to 70% among individuals with metabolic disorders such as metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, and obesity. A new trials show patients on Ozempic had an average of 31% reduction in liver fat, with 29% of the par participants experiencing a complete resolution of their liver disease, resulting in the liver fat decreasing to 5% or less of the overall liver content. Now, PCOS. An estimated of 5 million women in the U.S. have PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome. The production of excess testosterone in these women leads to irregular, painful, and heavy periods, infertility, excess acne, and hair growth, and ovarian cysts. The hormonal imbalance can also lead to metabolic complications, which is why many women with PCOS are now being prescribed Ozempic, off-label to help normalize their excess insulin production, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol. Unfortunately, women with PCOS gain weight and develop 
insulin resistance, which can turn into diabetes. Currently, a clinical trial on Ozempic in young women who have both PCOS and obesity is underway to determine whether the drug can improve PCOS quality of life, emotional well-being, and sense of achievement. Anecdotally, people using Ozempic, including Oprah, have reported that this is a miracle drug and claiming that it has completely changed their lives for the better and has been a turning point in their life in every which way, socially, body image, confidence, everything. Clinical studies have examined the quality of life of people taking semiglutide, and they saw a significant improvement in their physical functioning, perceptions of their general health, social functioning, and mental health. All the colored bars in this graph shows an improvement of physical functioning in five different trials compared to placebo in the gray bars. Obesity is clearly associated with increased mortality. However, obesity per se doesn't kill you. It's a diabetes, heart disease, cancer, stroke, and other chronic diseases from being obese that end up killing you and reducing your quality of life. If you are one of these people who need this drug to get your body back in a good state of metabolic health so you can have a better quality of life, then you might view it as a magic bullet. Although I feel very divided about this medication, I also want to emphasize that these videos on Ozempic are not about whether you should be taking the drug or not. Only you and your doctor can do this assessment. However, have a look at last week's video where I cover all the serious side effects of taking these medications it is important to factor in that there are legitimate risks to taking these medications due to some serious and not so serious side effects. If you are on this drug and want to continue using it for long term, then I think you may want to do your own risk benefit assessment analysis, by which you should balance the potential side effects versus the established clinical benefits of these GLP-1 agonists. Which way will the scales tip for you when you do this assessment? I hope this video has been helpful. If you've enjoyed its content, please like and subscribe and share it with anybody who you believe might benefit from it. This is Dr. Sadali Powell. See you next week.